Our final speaker is Maris O'Connell, who needs no introduction, I think, probably to anybody in this room, um, who is the CEO of the Alzheimer's Society and has been a, an advocate and a leader of everything that's been going on in this whole area for many years in Ireland. So I'd hand over to Maris. The, um, I, I suppose the Alzheimer's Society of Ireland is 30 years old uh, this year and has, I suppose, gone, gone through many and various forms of trying to represent both the carer and the person with dementia. And I think we've come to, I suppose, the 30th year where uh, I suppose there is lots of things to celebrate. I think we celebrate the good work that both uh, Eamon and Suzanne have done in pulling together a document uh, uh, supported by uh, an advisory group. I think there's been lots of good thinking going on uh, across the country and a lot of very practical, uh, I suppose, interventions that have begun to make people sit up and think differently about uh, how we respond to people with dementia and their carers. Um, over the last two years, we have had the privilege of um, uh, working, I suppose, on a high level of trying to influence the political agenda uh, in trying to make dementia healthcare priority. And we've been supported by Atlantic Philanthropies in doing that. And our aim over the last uh, two years has been, I suppose, to make sure that um, the politics of dementia remains uh, within, uh, I suppose, government circles and that, um, that there is a, a need to continue to educate um, our political leaders in order that they may not forget who they are serving. I think the second element is um, that uh, we embarked two years ago on a public awareness program in terms of uh, trying to raise the awareness of uh, earlier diagnosis um, and for people with dementia to feel more comfortable in approaching uh, uh, different services to talk about uh, how, they, um, how, how they can uh, be assisted in responding to, to what they need. And I think over the last two years, there's been an increase, certainly in the services that we have provided. Um, we've, we've reached, I suppose, people uh, in, the, in, in this present year, we are reaching th uh, about 3,000 people in community services. Uh, providing peop uh, that service both uh, for those 3,000 people but also for 3,000 uh, uh, family members um, uh, so that uh, one of our opportunities we took was to, 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 to have a dementia summit to try and get a representative body um, together uh, towards the end of last year so that we could uh, listen, reflect and hear what they, th those people were saying. And they're not saying anything too radically different to what we've heard today, except that we need to be listened to, that we need to be part of this process, that we need the tools to enable us to do that, so that if you're going to do any kind of consultation, you need to be aware of what we are saying. And I think that, to us, was something very significant um, and something that we, we need to continue to share uh, among people um, that are, are going to enact, I suppose, and develop this strategy. And I suppose the most important part of this strategy isn't necessarily, because well, we all more or less agree what needs to go into this, uh, the most important part of this is how it's going to be implemented and how it's going to be resourced. Um, and resourcing, I think, as many people have said, isn't about money necessarily. Um, it's about how we use our gifts and our talents and our ability to collaborate. Um, and I, I suppose we struggle a lot sometimes with how best to collaborate. Um, and also I think the most, uh, one of the most significant things that, are, that is happening, uh, not just to, through Genio, but through other organizations that um, are working with the Alzheimer's Society, like Older and Bolder, the Aging Well Network, um, that somehow we are normalizing, trying to normalize, bring into ordinary places uh, the word dementia, the experience of dementia, the person with dementia, uh, so that um, 
so that dementia now isn't the bailiwick of the Alzheimer's Society or the medical profession, but it is about the society in general. It's about making sure dementia is in the marketplace. Um, that this, like disability, is a societal issue. It isn't my responsibility or ours just in this room. Um, and so, you know, it's really good for us to come together to talk to each other and to listen to what is best practice. But we have to take a missionary approach to this, that we can't go on talking to ourselves, that somehow we've got to get the message out there, uh, that, um, that other networks, uh, as, uh, as has already, already been said, need to hear the message that normalizing dementia is going to liberate the person with dementia and is going to free the carer, not necessarily from the burden of uh, that continuous, I suppose, journey through dementia, but they're going to be free enough to know that they've got supports. And there are little examples uh, of that going on across the country. Um, and I think we need to celebrate those, you know, home from home, whether it's the critical response unit in Dundalk or the home from home program uh, in, in Leitrim that just takes over an ordinary house uh, and invites people in. It's about the ordinary ways in which we can actually deal with this, what seems to be an enormous um, uh, complex uh, issue. And we try to break it down in small, play, in small uh, bites in order for us to get our message across to both our politicians, to assist our policy makers, and to make sure that the person with dementia is very purposely focused at the center of everything we do.